I wanted to discuss the Illuminati, and probably nobody has has spoken about or brought more information to us or revealed to us about the Illuminati than yourself. Um, going back to those 1985, those 80s videos that I was talking about, uh, you were bringing up the Illuminati then, pretty much a fresh subject for the world uh, when you brought it up back then. Today, it's pop culture. It's everywhere. It's gone from you in a library in <laughs> in, 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 in Burbank, right, to, to Madonna. Now, that's pretty crazy, and I don't think most people out there, they just think it's a cute term, but they don't fully understand it. So let's go back to the beginning, and I want your definition of the Illuminati. Who are they? Well, that's a subjective question, actually, you know, because there's going to be a lot of people who have a lot of different ideas. I think, uh, <clears throat> ultimately, that goes back to... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if you're ready for this, but this is what I think. I've only been looking at it for 56 years. So this is what I think, based on my understanding, is that ultimately Illuminati can be traced back to the Jesuits uh, in the Vatican. The Catholic Jesuit movement was even known as its founding when the, when the, when the Jesuit movement was founded. It was being referred to in Latin <clears throat> by such names as the Illuminati. Uh, what I'm saying is that I think it is because the Jesuits are a military order in the Catholic Church. They have generals and they have the troopers. And so it's a military order. It's nothing holy or righteous. It has nothing to do with loving the Lord Jesus and being washed in the blood of the Lamb and saved by the Holy Ghost. We're talking military we're talking fascism, military. Uh, it's an incredible, dark story about the Jesuit order and how it has been behind the scenes since its founding <clears throat> for, uh, what, 400 years or something like that, mm -hmm. that uh, has been behind world revolutions, violence, uh, you know, the... <laughs> When you get into the, 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 the superstructure of the Roman Vatican, I'm not talking about the Catholic people. My dear mother was a Catholic, and my family were Catholic. I'm not talking about the good Catholic people. I was born and raised a Catholic. I'm talking about the, the, uh, the organization, the church itself. Where did it come from? You know, and uh, and when you start looking into the actual history of the Vatican, where it came from, who founded it, where the money came from, and how it was connected uh, with the Roman Empire behind the world scene, uh, when you understand the, the 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 real powers behind the Roman Empire, when you think about the Caesars of Rome and how powerful they were. They, like the President of the United States today, merely represent the real powers, the money powers behind the empire. So today, the President only represents the real, the real uh, uh, rulers, you should say. Uh, the real rulers of this world are the people with money, the powerful people with big money. And so uh, during the Roman Empire, the Caesars appeared to be very violent and ruthless and powerful people, but actually they were merely the fronts for the real rulers, which was the Pisos, P-I-C-O-S, Pisos family. People like the Pisos were the Rothschilds behind the Roman Empire, just as the Rothschilds are behind the British Empire today. Uh, well, Rome also had their bosses of all bosses, back then. And so when you look at the life of Arias, Copernicus, Pisos, and the Pisos dynasty, and how they were involved with uh, uh, the, the creating of Christianity, and uh, creating of the Bible, and creating of religion in the Roman Empire, and then when the fall of the Roman Empire came, uh, you know, they, they were still behind the scenes. It didn't bother them. So when the fall of the actual empire itself collapsed, they went on because they were the guys behind the scenes. It doesn't bother them. 
So they just opened up a new operation. Uh, you know, one went bankrupt. It's okay. We just opened up a new one, and we call it the Vatican. And so now we are using the Vatican in Rome, and uh, uh, you know, with the Holy Father, and therefore all of the politicians, all the gangsters, the mafiosis, all of the dark figures uh, of bloodshed, and violence from around the world, they all show up at the Vatican to kiss the ring of the Pope and to bow and curtsy before him, because the bottom line is, Jackson, he is the boss. All roads lead to Rome, period. That's the bottom line. Do you think you'll and behind, ever see And behind the Vatican and behind the Pope is a very powerful secret societies that are phenomenally important, powerful, financial, uh, militaristic, uh, terrorist organizations. Look at the uh, operations of Opus Dei. Opus meaning work and die meaning God. Opus Dei, the work of God and my Lord God. What their connections directly to Propaganda Due, P2, uh, the P2 Lodge out of the Vatican, which is a secret society uh, operating around the world, which is financing, organizing, and directing terrorist activity all over the world for the Vatican so that England and America can go in and uh, put down the, uh, the terrible problem and help all the poor people and never realizing the whole entire world is lying in the power of a dark secret and the world has no idea in the world what's going on. I don't and think I, you'll be kissing. Amazed. Yeah, I don't think you'll be kissing the ring of the Pope anytime soon. No, no, no. no I don't. I don't see that in my crystal ball. <laughs> uh, let, let, let me. You add. have no idea how bad this thing really is. <laughs> I do, and okay. uh, I, but but you really do. Let's let's yeah. stay right here, uh, uh, Jordan. The uh, the information. And knowledge that the Vatican is sitting on, one can only imagine and guess. And as far as you want to take your imagination, it's not yep. going to go far enough, right? No, nope. you're and right. Yeah, exactly. that's that's the truth. And you have been you have been collecting and distributing and talking about this uh, knowledge for a very very long time. But I do want to address some of the possible things that they are sitting on that influence their decisions, and one of them is an alien one, an alien agenda. So. Yes, absolutely. I totally agree with you. So with um, you, you brought up Copernicus, right? And, mm -hmm. and you think about everything that they have done with heresy and persecution and, and, and death when it came to the knowledge of the universe, uh, our solar system, the sun, and, and all of that that they probably knew what was going on and they didn't want this knowledge to get out. Today they have observatories and they're talking about baptizing ET, right? Yep. What is what is it that they know? I think that they have known for a long long time. Uh I I am totally convinced from from what I have been able to personally see and talk to individuals who know and on the inside that the Vatican, along with uh, the U.S. government and Russian government and probably some other governments around, especially the British, uh, have been aware for a long, long time that uh, there is a power in this world so awesome and so frightening and so profoundly evil. And it, it directs the, the, the world of mankind behind the scenes uh, you know, even uh, who was it? The president, 28th president of the United States was Woodrow Wilson. And if you recall that famous quote from Woodrow Wilson back in the 30s, where he said that there was a power in this world so frightening and so powerful that wealthy and, and important people around the world are frightened to death to even mention its name. And they don't want to talk about it at all because it's fearful. It's like talking about the mob in public. And so uh, I think that there has always been the presence of a very powerful secret societies operating around the world and still do today. Uh, we, we, we don't even begin to know who they are. It's not, has any, it has nothing to do with the important, uh, so-called important you know, figures and, and institutions that we see today. No, no, no. There's something far, far bigger 
far bigger than you have even suspected that's been going on for thousands of years. And the institutions like Hollywood uh, and the military industrial complex have known about this very powerful presence uh, that is what I call overshadowing the human destiny of the world. And I am totally convinced for myself that it has to do with extraterrestrial presence. Something else is on this earth that is driving the human race mad. But it, there's nothing you can do about it. There's no way you can defend yourself from it. Right. And uh, basically, I guess, is what the, uh, what the story is in the Bible about the devil and, and the demons uh, that control the world. Well, I think there's a modicum of, uh, of value in that concept. I think there is something to that idea that there is some kind of a highly intelligent, extraordinarily brilliant, man, incredibly uh, evil presence in the world that that is behind dictators, murder, violence, and this is what the human race is dealing with, but we don't know it, so we're fighting each other. You know, the Democrats and the Republicans and the blacks and the whites and the cowboy and the Indians, so we're all fighting each other, never for a moment realizing something else is on our earth and it's driving the whole human race mad. And there's nothing, and this is important, there's nobody going to get into politics unless that power allows it to. Nobody is going to run anything in this world unless that dark power says so. So, then, you know, so I don't know what you could do with that one. Take that and smoke it in your pipe. Because right, right, as far right. as I'm concerned, military and presidential people, I don't care how good they may think they are, they are not going to do nothing unless they are allowed to do it by the powers that really operate behind the world throne. Why do you think, Jordan, that today, more than more than ever, uh, we have nothing but information about exoplanets, fast radio burst, ET contact, life on Enceladus and Europa, and, and, and Mars is always part of the conversation now. Uh, it seems like we are being prepped. I mean, we talk about it all the time, but we are really being prepped for some <laughs> kind of disclosure or some kind of ET event. This, this is getting us acclimated for it. Do you feel the same thing? Yes, yes. Well, let me let me say this, that one of my dear friends that I used to work with many years ago, I, I, he's still here with us, uh, is Norio Hayakawa. Yep. And Norio was a very dear friend. I love him very much. And Great guy. He's always been a wonderful, wonderful friend. And a troublemaker, but, too. Now, come on, you got to put in troublemaker there. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but I'm leading him. And I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, but, right. Uh, but Norio used to, when he was giving a lecture, at these conferences that I was speaking at too, he would uh, he was promoting the idea that uh, that maybe the the government, uh, the governments of the world and the secret societies of the governments of the world are planning a fake uh, 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 invasion to frighten the whole world into falling into the trap of a new world order where we all give up our arms and we all give up. And we cling to one great leader of the world, and he will save us from these extraterrestrial. Uh, but the whole thing, in Noriel's opinion, could very well be just a plot. Just uh, and so one night after in Pasadena, one night after one of the big uh, uh, whole life expos that I was speaking at, and he was too. We all went out to dinner, and I mean, it was a whole bunch of the speakers, all top of the line people. And we all went out to dinner, the speakers, and he began talking about that to everyone and explaining how this was all being set up. I said to him at that dinner, I said, Norio, I can take the same facts that you have enumerated. I can take the same facts and come up with a totally different story. And, that's, and this is it. Maybe you're saying that all of this stuff is being put together to to fool us into believing that there's going to be a, an alien invasion. 
I'm saying maybe there's going to be an, an alien invasion, and the governments, as stupid as they are, they know that. They've been told they're going. it's going to happen. And it's not going to happen for a while because the invaders are like the Nazis, are very, very bright. These entities from wherever they have come are very smart. They're not going to drop in on us immediately. They know the, the, the way the human race works, you've got to prepare them. Over maybe a hundred years, prepare them. And so I said, so maybe that's what's happening. Maybe Hollywood and, and governments are promoting all of this because they know it's actually going to happen and there's nothing you can do about it. And therefore, Hollywood is being directed to prepare us with these scenarios like Spielberg with... Uh, and Indiana Jones and the UFO stuff and the and uh, you know all of these space thrillers. I think this is probably preparing the human race for something which governments already know that's coming, and there's nothing we're going to do about it. That's but, what I think. And and wouldn't it have already happened though, Jordan? I mean, we wouldn't even be on this show right now if ET had bad intentions. Well. I'm I'm saying that well of course you know if you if you go back to the people who have talked about this from from you know, from the inside they're saying that there are different ETs here they're not all bad right and uh, and so you know but I see a presence on the earth which I guess uh, Christians had the better explanation for it even if it isn't exactly correct but. The idea that Christianity has provided that there is some kind of a demonic, for lack of a better term, a demonic, demon-possessed uh, spirit in the world, which they call the devil, which I already, which I understand is simply simply putting a D, the letter D in front of the word evil becomes right. devil. Right. Take one of the O's out of good becomes God, so God is good and the devil's evil. Right. But I do believe that there is something really important about the concept that there is a spiritual presence in the world that we cannot see, but it's here. We you know, we can't see wind, but it's here, and we can't see TV uh, waves in the air, but they're here. So there's so many things we can't see, but they are here. Well, I think that there is a spiritual presence on the earth that, as I said, Christianity uh, has talked about being devils and demons and devil worshipers, etc. I think there is legitimately something to that story. I don't think it's exactly the way Christianity understands it, but I think the concept is right. We are being overshadowed by some sort of a dark force that is leading us and directing us, and ultimately uh, bringing us to a terrible place in the world and the history of civilization. And I'm frightened because I know there's nothing that we humans can do about it. And the reason why is because knowledge is power. And there are too many important people in this world that don't want this kind of knowledge out. All isn't you have to that do well? Is isn't that to the people who are running the world? They'll tell you to keep your mouth shut, right? And just pay your bills and be in compliance and and kiss the ring, and that's all you need to know. So, well, and that's the doom and gloom side of it, and I totally get it because the agenda is the agenda, and we can all see that. But but certainly, when I, I hear you when you say there's nothing we can do about it, if the knowledge doesn't get out. But if the knowledge continues on its flow and what is going on today, in the end, we will win, right? Well, I think you're probably right on that. I mean, I, because being old, I'm, 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 I'm 76 years old, going on 77 years old, and I've been, all, I've been through hell in my life. And so naturally, as an older guy, I, 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 I tend to be more pessimistic, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I earned it because, because of my age and my experiences. But I think right. You're, you're right. I think eventually uh, the world is going to uh, awaken and there's going to be some really interesting times to live in as the chaos is is now sweeping the world and, and the world of mankind is realizing that nothing is what you think it is. My God, I was saying I that a long time ago. I know. Isn't that right? And I, I wanted to, uh, before we hit this next break, 
you have seen all the phases of the conspiracy community. You've seen all the infighting over the years. You've seen the intrusions. You've seen the disinformation. You've seen uh, the agents that have infiltrated and, and tried to disrupt things. You've seen all of it. And it's going on today in our community. And oh, yeah. and why 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 do they why why is that why do we have uh, this infighting that is going on uh, is, is it is it Washington interfering uh, with with you know disinformation campaigns and and causing all of this you've experienced all of it uh, why are we living it today probably worse than ever before. I think it's because not necessarily Washington, although uh, that that's uh, that would be one of my first thoughts is Washington, but I'm sure that there are very very well hidden, well heeled, highly financed, and extremely brilliant secret societies, uh, fraternal orders. We can all realize we can all deal with the fact in your mind about mafia. That's organized crime. We we can all envision that and, and understand that. You're talking about Chicago during the 30s with you know with mafia killings, etc. And and the Godfather, Godfather Three, and you know all of these movies on the mob and the mafia. So we can all wrap our minds around that and say, okay, so okay, so they were organized crime, but you got the FBI and the police and all that. No, I'm saying that these uh, organized criminal organizations are not even scratching the surface of the real criminal powers. These, uh, the, the real criminal powers are absolutely frightening. When you understand they run your country, and it is a secret movement, secret societies that meet dark in dark rooms and meet at night and they meet in bank buildings that you don't know anything about. So when you're sleeping at three in the morning, they're having their meetings about who's going to live and who's going to die. And the stuff going on in Washington, D.C., wow, you have no idea in the world how corrupt that system of what we call Washington, D.C., what it really is what it actually is and who's really running it and where it's taking all of us and our destiny as a country and as individuals, where we are going, you have no idea. And I've been trying desperately to get people to, you know, to look at the evidence that I've been producing over the years. It's been very difficult. But like you said, and I think you're probably right, People are waking up, and it very well might be that ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, something is going to change, and maybe our Creator uh, will see to it that He steps in, whatever God is. I do believe in God. I do believe in the presence of a spirit in the universe. There's no doubt in my mind about it. But uh, perhaps that one will step in and save us at a last resort if we start waking up and doing something ourselves to show the great spirit that we don't want this any longer. So that's what I do. That's who I am. That's what I've been trying to do.